Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. This is that vehicle we're doing inspection on for an owner with, as I said, 149,640 Ks with original injectors, a lot of original things. He's owned it since almost new, since about 40 odd thousand Ks, 2011. It's a 2009 120 and it's a five speed auto. So you know what the readings shouldn't be. And we're gonna have a look on the diagnostic right now and have a bit of a look what's going on. So. You can get to learn how, what readings should and shouldn't be. Remembering that coolant temp's only 56 and that loads up. So we're gonna need to run this video until the coolant temp gets up to 83 to give you all the correct readings. Well, let's just have a look at the individual feedback while we're waiting. And you can already see, and that's why we check it now. You can already see number two and number four are both out of specification. The injection volume is actually quite good for 149,000 Ks, and that's why checking all the readings is important. You know, I, I can, you know, I have a bit of a whinge about everybody seems to be focused on these individual feedbacks, one, two, three, four. Uh, sometimes they can be fine, but the, you've seen in other videos, well, if you haven't, go and have a look again. This will be in the diagnostic playlist. You're best to watch them all and you can see all the variables. I'm just gonna back the vehicle out of the workshop. Lucky we're on private property and we can do what we want, what we want with phones and videos and stuff. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's not up to temperature yet. And you can see that number four is going up a little bit. Let's have a look and talk about some of the other readings just while we're waiting and watching it warm up. And I might give it a bit of a sort of rev and warm it up. The readings will go off, but just to get it to warm up to show you what the readings can be at 149,000 Ks on a 11, 12 year old vehicle um, to help you recognize when there's a problem. And you can see those feedback values. One of them's coming down, number two. So what's happening there? Some people have asked in videos, what does it mean and whatever. So quite simply, there you end it. So injection feedback in one, two, three, four individual feedback values so that means how much fuel is being adding or sub added or subtracted to each cylinder so where you haven't got a minus there it's fuel added so number two for whatever reason it's adding extra fuel and on mainly number four it's subtracting fuel right which is generally an indication there's a problem and i can tell you it's not anything else in the engine it's going to be injectors injectors are everything on how these vehicles run I'm surprised the main injection period is as good as what it is, and it's probably gonna get better, but look how jumpy it is, right? Down the bottom, guys, main injection period. Second bottom line now, right? You watch it. Jumping up over eight, and it's going down into the fives as well. It's all, there you go, you saw five. Off its head. Now, main injection period, it does jump around quite a bit, uh, but on a good set of injectors, usually win 50 or sort of 100 at the very outside. On a 120 Prado, five-speed auto, you're normally gonna see, geez, I'm trying to remember the specs now, you're gonna see around the 550 mark, right? So, you know, five, 550, six type thing. 550 to six, it does vary a lot, but 550 to six is a lot better indication than, uh, what am I seeing at the moment? 500 to bloody 850, off its head, right? Uh, so, what we're going to do, we're just going to go back up to the load again and see the load and the coolant temperature, 65. So it's a bit slow to warm up. So we're just going to give it a, we're just going to give it a few revs for a minute. And hopefully that brings the coolant temp up fairly quickly. So then we can resume looking at all the readings at full operating temperature. Hopefully it doesn't take too long few degrees a minute if it takes too long I'll end the video and I'll rejoin it but sit tight because this is really important information so you can see and learn to diagnose problems now the 150 Prado even the LC Land Cruiser 150 it is quite different different software different injectors and it is very difficult to do diagnosis on it which is why we recommend replacement you know Generally, they don't make noise. The 150s, they're a lot quieter. Generally, they don't make noise. So 
So therefore, if you get rattles and knocks out of a 150 Prado, that's why we replace injectors and it fixes it. If we get smoke, if we get, if we get any symptoms, it's all about injectors. And from doing so, and it fixing the problem and stripping injectors, we get to see the wear and tear on the internal parts to know, yep, that's when they're due. Because it doesn't show up real well in diagnostics usually on those vehicles. And I'd imagine a lot of other vehicles, you've got the same problem. So we want to see 83 degree coolant temp. We're pretty close. We're on 80 degrees, right? Two, two and a half thousand revs. No big deal, you know. Just cruising along. It's coming up 81. This would be close enough, but let's just spend another 20, 30 seconds getting it to 83, and then we'll let it idle and it's all happy, and it might go a bit cold again, because as soon as the thermostat opens now, is when the thermostat's opening right now, it could drop down a little bit, so let's just give it an extra moment with a rev so the water pump's flushing the coolant through. Maybe not, we've hit 84, 83, there it is, thermostat's open. Right, bit of a delay from where the temperature sensor is to where the thermostat is, 82. As suspected, some people are going, geez, he knows these cars, he knows these systems and how things work. Yeah, well, when you've been around a few decades and you've got a brain included, it doesn't take much, really. That could go back up to 83 again now, thermostat's closed. But look, we're close enough, so let's have a look and see what's going on. Holy moly. Okay, the load reading, right? Normal load reading with good injectors. You got, who knows? 120 Prado, 5-speed auto, yep. You're going to see around about the 12 mark. 12's good, 13's okay, 14's fine too. Uh, 15, st time to start saving 16 new injectors. Need new ones. The load is on 20%, okay? So it's well out of specification. Still calling on 83. Now, let's go and have a look at the other important readings and discuss those. Okay, here we go. Injection volume didn't change. It stayed up around 11. With a new good fresh set of injectors on this vehicle, the injection volume will be around about the 6. So it's putting in almost double the amount of fuel it needs at idle. Okay, so definitely overfueling there. You can also see in this instance, not always, individual feedbacks, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it doesn't mean two injectors are worn and the other two are okay. This is the big mistake a lot of people make, including diesel workshops, Toyota dealers, whatever, you don't go and replace two injectors because you've got two individual feedbacks out, right? They're all worn, they're all flogged. Look at number four. Maximum specification is plus or minus three. Okay, so it's out of spec. Usually anything under one or around one point something is a decent reading. Anything two or above, I'm not a fan of, to be quite honest, but sometimes it happens and it's fine. So there is variables to that. Um, and as I said, Pilot 1, Pilot 2, they usually always stay around the 430. You can see Pilot 2 is jumping up to over 500, so there's, a, there's problems there as well. And the main injection period, we already spoke about, jumping from the 500s through to the 800s. Let's see if it's still doing that. Settle down a little bit maybe, but it's still all over the place. That's going to settle to the 550, 600. We do have a lot of follow-up videos on jobs like this, so stay tuned. This is David's car with 149,000 Ks. I'll just try and show you that so you know. Well, it's hard to see the damn camera. A bit further back on an angle maybe. I don't know. You can't see. What? What's going on there? Someone with the technology knows. You can just see it there. Anyway, right, these injectors only... So for the people that go... Oh, mine's only done X amount. It doesn't, you know how I've got the, I've got the seven year 170. General recommendation across the board. There's variables to that. But you know how I've got that recommendation? It's because I know it's based on this, you know, 149,000 Ks. Don't tell me it hasn't done 170. It's well past seven years. These things sitting around, not good for them. Anyway, guys, here's a good little education for you. You can see how far flogged they are. And that's why I say seven years. Because you, you could imagine on this one at about seven years, the readings would have been more like injection volume might have been you know eight or nine the the individual feedbacks might not they might have been about two and a half or three the main injection period might have been do you know what i mean it's it's long kind of long overdue now that being said we've seen a lot worse so it's not a big deal it's just time to change them this one you've seen the reasons why it need injectors it probably got the short suction control valve let's have a quick look at the fuel pressure before we finish off a bit further wrong way mate wrong way come on 
Come on, Anthony. What are you doing? You should know by now. Timing, yeah. Not too bad, not too good. There's the fuel pressure at the bottom, right? Ideally, we've demonstrated target common rail pressure at 35, and it should hover between about 32 and 35, maybe 36. But look at this one, right? It's already gone down to 29, 30, up to 39. You can set it on a different screen and you can record the highs and lows. But I've seen enough. We saw a 29 once, a 39 once. It's jumping all over the joint. That's that short suction control valve. And if you've done your injectors and you want further improvement, suction control valve is the way to um, do that. Anyway, guys, you know that already. Uh, if you got something out of this and it's helping your education on diagnostics, please give us the thumbs up. You know that like button. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss out on the next important bit of information. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.